Toll free. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 free. Free Talk Live, live from Borkfest 2014, and you can join us here. Uh, tonight, we're in the final segment of the program. Enough time for your call if you dial in right now at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we'll continue with wonderful guests from the Porcupine Freedom Festival all throughout the week. We've got another one coming up here in just a moment. But first... Uh, we'll tell you about the Porcupine Freedom Festival a little bit more. Uh, Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. Go there, learn more about the event. It's a great time, great group of people. Over a thousand people expected to show up here throughout the week and, uh, and have a blast, socialize, party, do family activities. There's really no way to accurately describe what it's like to actually be here. You really have to come up and experience it for yourself. Ian and Mark are here in the studio tonight. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Ian and we actually have Dobby Barker here, who made the pens for the uh, the platinum amplifier. Program. He's not in the room at the moment, but, but he is here in the in the camp room. Yeah, he's got uh, some of the pens here, and we actually had a guy who just uh, did the platinum amplifier right here. He's going to get a pen uh, tomorrow. He did, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he came up and. Uh, and gave us some, some cash to support the show, so I certainly appreciate that. Uh, so let's bring our next guest in here, Joel Valenzuela from Manchester. Hi, how's it going? But formerly of elsewhere. When did you move to New Hampshire? When? I moved in September of last year. So you're relatively new to this whole thing, not quite here for a year. Is this your first pork fest, or did you attend last this year? This absolutely is my first pork fest. Oh, wow. I came out from Arizona in September, having never been to the um, above Washington, D.C. on the East Coast. I just packed all my earthly belongings. You must have frozen to death during the winter then. No, I no. loved it. Yeah. I hated 120 degree really? weather so much. That it, was, it was great. There's pictures of me out playing in the snow all week long. It's uh, certainly a contrast between somewhere like uh, Florida, where I'm from, or Arizona, where it gets even hotter uh, than Florida. So you came up here, you got involved in the Free State Project, but your past actually took you through the White House? Did I hear that you worked for the government sometime? Or what's the yes, story there? Yes, I did, but I did not receive a single red cent from them. Really? So what happened with that? I don't know anything about it. All right, so back in 2008, I did an internship for the White House under George W. Bush in the Office of Public Liaison. I was sort of a public relations um, goon for the White a House. A goon. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want to say that, right? What brought you there? I mean, were you a neocon at that time in life? Well, I was always sort of... To a certain extent, what I am now, I always sort of believed in max in the small the government was evil and getting away with the smallest amount we can, and that was that was more of a professional opportunity presented to me that I just couldn't say an offer I couldn't refuse. Right? I was just I get to go there and get inside the beast and see what it's really all about. And it's just a short list of people who can say, yeah, I've I've worked at the White House. Exactly, and I wanted to be on that short list just just so and. Exactly what happened. I found out exactly why liberty is so important. It's not there's all these bad people in office. Or these are not all these bad people working in government. It's that the government itself is what's bad. There's a lot. I met a lot of really passionate, committed, selfless, hardworking, good people that go into the White House and sacrifice a lot of their lives for not very much pay, or you know, they burn out really quick, all because they believe in something greater than that. But they're throwing it at the state at the altar of the state, and that just highlights really what we're fighting against. I'm not a very big believer in large organizations, period. Like, exactly. I love the, the saying that uh, you know, none of us are as dumb as all of us. And it, exactly. really, when you get all these folks into this large organization, it doesn't matter how many geniuses you throw into a monopolistic, top-down, large behemoth organization like the state. At some point, I mean, like, it just, it's inefficient. It's just not going to work out. Yeah, exactly. And the White House itself, the executive office, is not a very large part of everything. It's just sort of a, it deals with the highest level and mm -hmm. relations between nations, et cetera, et cetera. And it's the whole rest of the team that's really doing most of the bad. But it's also the impossible job. People want the president of the United States to do everything for them. They want him to be their Is god. Oh, sure. And so, no He's matter supposed how, to be a four-year king yeah. or something, right? Sort of, in people's minds. And that's not 
the position. That's the, what people want. Mm -hmm. People want someone, big daddy government, to come in and solve all their problems. They no, want they, to look good. They want to have good hair. They want everything. Out they there. also promised to solve all their problems as well during the campaign. How, so, else, you know, how else do they get elected? You can't blame them. For, you can't blame people for taking the bait and sort of believing that somehow this one man or woman is going to make things better. So you uh, you learned a lot about uh, the state and why it's terrible through your experience in that. You ended up here in New Hampshire. Um, we can talk about what you were speaking about today, which is actually self-education. I, I, I like your, your personal story as well. Why move to New Hampshire? Where did you find out about this? Well, after I went into sort of a self-imposed exile from D.C., I'd been in the public policy big tech world for almost 10 years, and I was just ready for a little break. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and then I, when I was sort of ready to restart my life, I started looking through all the Atlas Economic Research Foundation, they have this whole list of all the think tanks around the planet that are pro-liberty. And I just start going down them one after another, see which one I wanted to end up in. And so Peru fell out for me, and then I came across New Hampshire, and I'm like, oh, Free State Project. And so I was initially wanting to go work in a think tank in New Hampshire that hmm. really... Yeah, thank goodness we don't have any of those crappy things. <laughs> exactly. Well, here, here's the thing. So I started paying attention to the Free State Project, I thought it was interesting. And so I started following everything, and then it was when Cynthia Chase called out Free Staters number one enemy. I just thought, <laughs> that was my Rich Paul moment when Rich Paul saw the open carrying during the real ID protest and yeah. said, I have to be there. Cynthia Chase was when I, I thought, I have to be here. When she says Free Staters are the single greatest threat to the state. Exactly. When that happens, <laughs> I knew ever. this is the front line, I had to be there. And way, way back when I left the Leadership Institute in DC, I promised Morton Blackwell, the president, I said, wherever the front lines of liberty are, that's where you'll where find me. And you are on the front lines. You are out there with the, with video and recording devices, and you're you're documenting a lot of the activism that's happening in Manchester. There exactly. was recently a DUI checkpoint that you and uh, Robert Mathias were at, and you, you yeah. posted that stuff online. You tried to arrest me, too. At the DUI checkpoint? For walking into the street to hand out a pamphlet. Is there video? There is absolutely video of Manch Rock. YouTube channel. All right, so it's with the raw, okay, so with the raw channels, look, um, I love the raw channels. We've got Free, Freeman TV raw. Now Derek J has a raw channel. Now Manchester has a raw channel. Exactly. The problem with the raw channels, there's too much content there, and no one can actually go and consume it. So when you've got uh, when you've got a raw video that's worth highlighting, put a blog post out about that raw video, yeah. even if it's rough around the edges, even if it's just a raw clip. Like, this is what happened, I haven't had time to edit it yet, boom, here it is, and then you can see the rest of it, and here's the link to the raw channel, and then maybe somebody will subscribe to it. Well, as soon as I get back, I make an actual video, it's just about, again, a metaphorical money shot, because most of that clip is uh, a big brawl between Rob Mathias and a narco-communist, just yelling, <laughs> yell, oh, shouting match, that and then, it turns, then the cop shows up and the whole game changes. So, um, alt, alternative self-education, that was your talk this afternoon. Um, what do you mean by that? Basically, the title, the original title was School is Obsolete. And I'm trying to encourage people to drop out, get out of school, and start their education. So, I, so I, I mean, really, if we're talking to a ninth grader, um, I mean, is your advice, eh, screw school, go do something else? How, how old is ninth grade? I, I uh, 14, 14, 15, I believe. Well, my advice was don't drop out unless you have a plan. And I talked a little bit about how to do that talent and how to have, um, how to support yourself, how to find your passion if you don't have any. It's filled a lot of questions on that. Is this what you did? Did you drop out? No, I was homeschooled all the Lucky way you. up until college, including the first half of college, and then the. How do you homeschool for college? I did a distance program okay. for a university. Did one year on campus, and the other two, three years where I, I was just out doing interesting things and submitting them back to the university for credit, like going off to Romania for a, a summit on the influences of Islam in Eastern Europe and things like that. And then just, hey, here's my uh, foreign policy credit right there. Interesting. And the university just give it to you rather than taking a course? Yes. Now, George Wythe University out of Salt Lake, now they were out of Cedar City, Utah before, they are still unaccredited. And so as an unaccredited university, somehow I got every major DC think tank I wanted to, and of course the executive branch of the government, with an unaccredited degree. So... Anything's possible. Exactly, it's not... I'm telling you, Free Talk Live has to get away degrees. 
<laughs> just need to set up. Here you go. You're It'll done. be just as worthless as the rest. Here's a PhD. It's piled higher and deeper. Go on. <laughs> so you're also one of the hosts of the Rebel Love Show. Everybody in the audience is now a PhD. I said so. Just am. Yeah. I always wanted to be Dr. Vader. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're here. You're here all week, right? For exactly. Portfest all the way through Sunday. It's uh, it's not too late for folks to come out and join us all here on uh, this beautiful occasion with so many. The weather's been great so far. Cross our fingers that it continues to be great. It's it's usually a, gr a good time to be here. Congrats on your first Portfest, Joel. Well, exactly. Yeah. I was not gonna. I was not going to be one of those people to dip my toe in the water and be like, I don't know if I want to move here. I just knew I had to go. I came. So That's right. Am. That's how it was for me. But I don't blame people who want to experiment. They want to check it out. I mean, it can seem unreal to people what's happening here. And I think Portfest makes it real. Is what is all real. It's happening. All yeah. <laughs> Come join us. Portfest.com. Join Joel at rebelloveshow.com. Exactly. And I write for the desert lakes .com. Awesome. And freeking.com. Oh, yes, as well. We'll uh, continue tomorrow night here live from Portfest 2014. Woo! It's Free Talk Live. Woo!